But Channing, one big thing that people, first of all, like, your lips are so dry. Are you okay? <laughs> you want some water? I did drink water. Do you they want are some more? Yeah. I'm not used to this humidity out here. Humidity with <laughs> The NFL is back, and FanDuel Sportsbook is celebrating with 40 to 1 odds on any week one game. Who doesn't want to win $200 on a $5 bet? This is no Hail Mary, it's that simple. New customers get 40 to 1 odds when you place your first wager on any team to win. FanDuel is sports betting made simple. The app is so easy to use, plus, when you win, you'll get paid in as little as 24 hours. To get you started, here's who I'm taking for my week one 40 to 1 bet. Rams over the Bears. Obviously, week one, Sunday night football. You've got the first night, first game in SoFi Stadium, Matt Stafford. I know there's a lot of conversation about the quarterback situation with the Bears. I'm taking the hometown Rams. Hey, offers like this, they're just one of the many reasons I love betting the NFL on FanDuel. Number one rated sportsbook app in America. Easy to use, safe and secure, fast payouts. See for yourself why FanDuel is America's number one sportsbook. They're always hooking you up with exclusive odds boosts, great promotions, and so much more. Just sign up with promo code ROADTRIPPIN and you could win $200 on a $5 bet. That's promo code ROADTRIPPIN exclusively on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Disclaimer, 21 years and older and present in Arizona, Colorado, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, or Virginia, or West Virginia. New users only. $10 first deposit required. Must wager in designated offer market. Max bonus $200. Bonus for Tennessee users fulfilled in site credit within 72 hours. Tennessee site credit expires in 14 days after receipt. See full terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Restrictions apply. See full terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com backslash RG. Colorado, Iowa, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Illinois, or Virginia. 1-800-9-WITH-IT, Indiana. 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help in Michigan. Tennessee Redline, 1-800-889-9789 in Tennessee. Visit www.1800gambler.net in West Virginia or call one 800 next dash step or text next step in all caps to 53342 in Arizona. Welcome to a special edition of Road Tripping. I'm Richard Jefferson hosting, so you know this is going to be weird. I'm just replacing Allie Clifton, who's got a little bit of a break right now, but we're so excited to be a part of the FanDuel Sportsbook launch here in Arizona. And with that, we have two amazing, well, Channing's here too, but no one cares about that. We have two amazing guests, Cam <laughs> Johnson and James Jones, a.k.a. Champ. How you doing, Champ? I'm great. Good to see you, RJ. It was good to see you. We're going to talk over We're gonna talk over the young fella here when we do some grown folk about this joke. How you doing, man? <laughs> Welcome, doing? Cam. Thank you. Thank you for having me. He's 25. He's 25. I know. He's, I know. He was, he was he did his homework. He, he did his homework. He got drafted. <laughs> it's like, crazy how I didn't like, age. I'll stay like, 25 my whole career. Like, no, I was like, I didn't know they drafted people that old, right? Unless you were like from Africa. It was like Dikembe who was like said he was, said, you know, Serge Ibaka. No, these aren't. These no. jokes aren't funny. I mean, <laughs> no. I mean, there's, there's always rumors insane. about how old, how old some of these guys you are. You never know. Yeah, you never know. Thanks for not lying, Cam. Of course. <laughs> Thanks for not lying. I don't think I could hide it. No, no, no. no. So. Every you had a well documented history. Yeah. Do you know anything about Cam's history? I won't know. I went to North Carolina. Do you know where he started at? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I know Cam got a jumper in the NBA. He I got a like, I'll be honest. <laughs> I don't like college basketball except for the University of Arizona. Fair. I think it's unrealistic. Uh, I think it's just it doesn't relate as much. But I thought Cam, watching you your rookie year to where you are now, I've seen big progression. I thought you were huge for them to be the Suns to be successful last year. So. All what you did in college does not matter to me. So. <laughs> <laughs> not one bit. I don't care if you won four championships. Who you are in college is not who you are in the NBA. And you're a winner in the NBA, which is all that matters. That is all that matters. But he did have one of the coolest draft moments of all time that didn't include him. He had one, like, literally one of the coolest draft. But you know what I'm talking about, yeah, right? Kobe. What? Yeah, Kobe. When Kobe was just like, wow. What? Yeah, they, oh. he was talking about Cam getting drafted. Yeah. That's one of the coolest. Oh, I've seen that. I never knew who he was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was the wow. But I think the draft is is awesome. It's awesome. I hope you know. No, 
No, but Sorry, that's a trade. I'm just like, okay, that, cool. That he might get traded, so why am I hype? So <laughs> yeah. let's see if you can play for real or not. True. But that's not the Channing. When we're when, when you're young and oh, you're, it's, you're, the best. it's the best. Like it's when you best. get old and jaded, you're right. like, I don't know why these kids are excited. They're gonna get traded in a couple <laughs> years. The greatest moment ever. It, it is the greatest, greatest moment. moment. You got, when you got drafted to New York, you were excited, weren't you? Yeah, he was. What about when you got traded from New York? Ooh. <laughs> I was I was sort of excited. Because it was a new chance, and I actually got to play with James, yeah. right? And that was weird. He was the only year he didn't make the playoffs. Yeah, I know. But we had talent on we, that team. A really good team. Right? And not to go off on a tangent, and I know Please. it's the sun stuff, but, like, I try to tell people about how good Brandon Roy was. Yeah. <laughs> he was absolutely. You had to be there to see it in person. So, someone, like I, like, I got a little bit of heat when I, I, I referenced Cade Cunningham. Like, when you watch him play, I'm not saying he's like Brandon Roy, right. but when you watch his pace of play, like, he's not, like, moving super fast. He's super under control, understands the flow of game. Like, Brandon Roy used to cook people, and, like, people would just always be like, how is he, how is he doing? <laughs> yeah. and, he, and he was always that way. He was that way at Washington. I used to, say, he used to boil people. Boil, boil just like, <laughs> like, boil, a slow, like, like a low boil. simmer on I a mean, low you simmer. Look at it at the end of the game. He has like 30, 32. Yeah, the meat's falling eight, off the bone seven, at the end. Three, I mean, he, he used to call that one play, right? I think it was left. like on the one free throw line, oh, yeah. it would be like two down clear, and he'd be like, Channing, other side. I'm like, dang, okay, my bad. I know I ain't getting it. Whether it was Kobe, Ron Artest, whether it was Andre Kirilenko, you know, Tayshaun Prince, he would just use one or two jab step moves, face up, Pull up jumper. It was just it cold. It did not matter. Yeah. No, it didn't was, matter. It was tough. Yeah. Well, <laughs> look. Before we get going too much and get down memory lane, like the three of us, Cam, I want to talk a little bit about your experience this year. Uh, I had the I had the pleasure of going to the finals my first two years and losing, so I completely understand where you're going, where you're coming from. Channing never had that type of success. I don't know if James Jones did. He just won championships. But take me through like this experience. <laughs> take me through this experience this year. You know, you, you had last year, you had the bubble, you guys were kind of building something, and then this year you come in, and d- did you kind of know what was it different? When you guys added Chris Paul, was there something that you're like, oh, this year is going to be different? Yeah, um, I think the bubble gave us a lot of confidence mm-hmm. going forward, but I think we're on record of saying, like, I know there's a couple of clips, a couple of interviews we did early in the season, they're like, you know, typical preseason stuff, but they're like, how like how far do you guys think you can take this? And we're all looking at each other like, all the way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. We had a lot of confidence, and we had a lot of guys and guys that fill different roles, guys that do a lot of things. So going into the season, I think I think we were there. I think we knew what we had a chance to compete for. Uh-huh. Well, did you did you really understand how hard it is? Because that's what you know, Champ and I. Like, we, you know, we we been through the battles chanting all of us had been in playoffs before and this was really your I know the bubble was kind of an introduction to it but like did you guys fully understand how like much of a roller coaster emotionally physically like not having Chris for certain portions and just you know did you understand how like emotionally draining like a finals run is no but (laughs) they all told us champ CP everybody Jay everybody that had been to these points had told us that all these things are possible. So I think in guys that hadn't been there, myself, Mikhail, Book, DA, in a playoff-like situation, yeah. just assumed everything was going to be cranked to the max. So yeah. it's like, not, like, don't let anything catch you by surprise. So mm-hmm. can't say we we're specifically like, oh, we know exactly what's going to get thrown at us, but we we're like, all right, throw whatever, throw whatever it takes at us. What is one thing that you realize about yourself, like – in a good way, where you're like, damn, I didn't know I could go that hard, or if I just lock in defensively, or if I, you know, lift this type of weight. Like, what is one thing you discover about yourself? Because until you get pushed to those limits, Mm -hmm. right, you're not going to figure that out, right? Because you're just going to say, okay, I know I can shoot the corner three. I know I can go left. But when you start playing guys up in higher levels, you go Western Conference Finals, Finals, people know your scatter report. So, are you going to go right and cross back over left? You know, like, what is one thing that you discovered about your game and yourself uh, through that playoff run? One thing in specific um, for me was the defensive concepts and rotations and yeah. how they kind of ratchet up, obviously, as yeah. the playoffs come along because you know what the other team's trying to run. You know their personnel. Like, as much as they know our tendencies, we're, we're, knowing, we're understanding their tendencies. And so the watching it all come together and – and really putting so much focus into understanding one team 
<laughs> six or seven <laughs> players. You start to hate them. It's fun. Oh, you start to hate them, though. It's, it's fun. fun. And, you, and you feel like you learn so much about defense in general. I mean, you, you can listen, play all your life, right. but I learned probably more defensively in that two months than I had the whole rest of my, my career. Yeah, well, yeah. so like like having Champ and, and having veterans, because like, like Champ, I, I know you're in the front office, but I know you are an involved front office. Like I know you communicate with the guys, like you're telling them what you see. Like did you see a change in your young players from like the beginning? What, what was the message that you were kind of telling them that like, hey, we can do this, but this is something that you have to pay attention to. It's going to be fucking hard. It's going to be this. It's going to be that. What was something that you were kind of communicating and then you were like, Oh, they I think they might they might be listening and understanding. Compete on the strength of your fundamentals. Right. Okay. So I always talk about he talked about defense, like more than anything in the playoffs, it's all defense. Yeah. Your best players are gonna take the shots. You know, Chris is gonna take twenty shots, Devin's gonna take twenty shots, you're gonna get three or four. Mm -hmm. You have to take three or four really good shots and you can't make mistakes on defense. Because in the playoffs, one bad rotation is a run. You're subbed out. You don't oh, play. And you so might not play another game. What, oh, I, what oh, I saw oh, with our younger guys from feeling. the first uh, playoff series, first game, was just their attention to the defensive rotations. Mm -hmm. And so you see some instances where five, six passes, I'm thinking like, all right, young guy, weak side, low guy, it's going to be a breakdown. And they're in the right spot. And I'm wow. like, okay. I'm, and then the next game, same thing, eight passes, low guy, supposed to tag, close out, force some baseline. And I'm like, I was expecting that to be a wide open shot. Yeah. And we made them do something differently. Okay. You know? And so, like, I had a chance to see them in those defensive moments where I'm expecting, like, all right, that's PG. Uh -huh. And PG is going to win this matchup. And I'm like, oh, he held his own. Yeah. That's growth for our young guys. And I said, okay, if, if they're com comfortable and confident in those moments now, I can't imagine what they're going to be like after they review Win. the end of this series and gain confidence and say, hey, man, we just did that. Oh, man. Well, and, and, and beating the Lakers. Now, 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 beating the Lakers in the first round. That, that We understand respectfully that they weren't 100%, but you still beat the Lakers. LeBron James was on that floor. Uh, they had a ton of guys with a ton of experience, and they were the defending champs. Like, when you guys and, – and, look, I know sometimes that people say, oh, you're too young – to really know what's going on. I was like, no, that's you out your damn mind. Like, if anything, I'm young and somewhat starry-eyed, right? Like, what was that like going against, you know, the greatest player of this era, defending champion, defending finals MVP? Like, did that ramp up your focus? Was that something that you were kind of – did you have that moment where, like, holy shit, like, we're playing against the Lakers in the playoffs? Um, I, it wasn't until – we won the series, and that, that was the first time LeBron has lost in the first round. Yeah. But it was like, oh. Oh. Yeah. You realize that it's never easy to beat a team led by LeBron James in the yeah. playoffs. You know that going in. Yeah. That's why me um, and Champ and Channing kind of, like, attached our – attached no, our head. And yeah. it's great. Come on. Yeah, come, like, on come on, big fella. Yeah. Yeah. And look. I mean, <laughs> so – we had seen them at the end of the regular season. Yeah. And you could tell that – it just felt like we were destined to see them in the first round. Yeah. And you could tell that the chippiness is starting to come into play and all that. So I think for us, like I said before, we didn't know what to expect. So you give us LeBron James and Los Angeles Lakers in the first round, and we don't have anything to compare it to. All we know is that we got to go out there and try our best. Yeah. Give everything we got, pay attention. Um, that scouting report for that, you know, couple days in between, you know, the end of the season, that first game was so detailed. I mean, I'm – We'd sit there with, with coaches and go over rotations and, and assignments. And if you're guarding this guy, do this. If you're guarding that guy, do this. If he gets the ball, that go force him this way. Rotation to come. And it's like all these sets of rules, and we're just like. People don't understand all right. that. Like, all right. Yeah, yeah, you okay. are, yeah you've been it on the tournament. It makes so much more sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you can't do that during the regular season. No. <laughs> you don't have that much time. You have time. That's right. a difference. Right. My playoffs that, are different. If you put all that effort into one team, you got another team the next right. night. Yeah, like, oh, it's yeah. like, wait, let's do these rotations. Then you're going to play like old school James Harden Houston <laughs> yeah. where it's no rotations. Yeah. Can you guard James Harden tonight? So What's going on? Th that, th like, really digging deep into LeBron's tendencies, yeah. really digging deep into AD's tendencies mm -hmm. and what they do, it was – I mean, you see what makes LeBron James one of the greatest basketball players of all time. Yeah. And for him to be doing that, you know, he's 
been in the league since I was seven. Yeah. 22 years. 22 years. Yeah, well, okay, so <laughs> so now you understand because yeah. you might not be a vet per se from, like, your years, but you once you go on a postseason run. But yeah, once you, well, he's 37 years old. He's in his second year. And, like, once you go on – once you're a vet from a playoff standpoint, you kind of, like, approach the regular season. Yeah, I took a shot at you. I, you take it – you take – yeah, yeah, you do it. It's on, okay. Man. It's all right. But, like, once you get there, you're kind of like, man, this regular season ain't shit, right? Because it's like you start to understand that your brain has a different gear. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, oh, they'll get us night, but this was three games and four nights. But once we get to lock in, there's a confidence that you guys get as a group. What was something that you guys talked about, like, privately? Like, when the coaches were gone, when this was gone, was was there a level of accountability for each other? Was there a level of picking each other up? Because even in that first round, I believe you guys were down, yeah. was it 2-1? You were down 2-1 at one point in time. Yeah. LeBron over there shimmying. Yeah. He over there salsa dancing and stuff. You know, what, like, what, what was that kind of like, hey, we got to pick ourselves up? We all watched the Lakers Warriors together at CP's house. Mm-hmm. That's and smart. And – at halftime of the game, it was like a giant meeting. Just yeah. everybody just huddled around outside. It was basically like, all right, let's talk about this. Yeah. Like, w- either one of these teams will be playing, and guys who have been in the playoffs before say what you need to say, and guys who hadn't say whatever you felt like you had to say. And I remember Jay, like, saying, guys, I just came out for a championship run, and the biggest thing that, that is required is that kind of connectedness, that kind of ability to withstand – going down two to one in a series and being able to bounce back and then he looked at all of us and he was like I need to know that you know when when we're on the court together that if I look around the court I know that y'all have my back because y'all will know that I have your back and so just moments like that kind of set the stage for us I felt to be able to handle what, whatever was thrown at us and and to just go out there and compete and I think we carried that throughout the throughout the whole entire playoffs anytime mm-hmm. you know whether it would be CP missing some time or guys getting nicked up or, or teams winning games that, you know, were close ones or hard-fought ones. Yeah. No, no. Go ahead, Chad. So the Suns' culture has been, you know, I was here in 2010, I think to 14, 15, and that was a different culture. It was a winning culture, right? Not obviously not to the NBA Finals, but we won a lot of games when we had a healthy team um, with Steve and Grant and Amari were here. Mm-hmm. And so the new culture of this team, what is that? And how do you continually to, the right word isn't engage it, but how do you put another step on top of that this year? I think the, the biggest thing is we're, we're a working team mm-hmm. and we're a team too. So I, you hear a lot of when you get to the NBA, it's super individual. You know, you're not going to have a great relationship with your teammates. But I think our whole team has a. Those are bad teams, by the way. Yeah, those, yeah, are bad teams. Teams. Bad. Those, those are only bad teams. Yeah. yeah, those are bad teams. Sure you hear horror stories. People are like, oh, well, if you're a lottery pick, you usually it, go it to a boo boo team. Yeah. You know, some people say it takes away your love of the game, or the business side, all these things. But my two years here, like, it's felt more like college where you have relationships with your teammates. You spend time with them. And you, like, you know, you honestly feel like you're, you're playing for the city. You know, yeah. you're, you're playing for your guys around you. Rather than just going out, it's, it's a like great a, city to play ooh, for. It's, it's a, a great, great city. city oh, I love it here. It's a great city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a great city. We're both from Phoenix. No, well, well, yeah, we're both yeah, from Phoenix. We're both Phoenix. You didn't do our, your research, but that's okay. I, 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 knew, I knew he was from Phoenix. I, no, no, well, he went to well, a 4A. 4A school. No, he went to a 5 best school. player in the state. Don't pay. Oh, what is that? Gatorade player of the year? One of us was McDonald's all American. Oh, one of us was a lottery pick. I blossomed later. My school in high school is called Moon Area High School. There we go. See, yeah, come on, man. To the moon. To the moon. No, okay, what you call champ? To the point about Chan- Channing talking about culture, like Greg Popovich used to joke and say, you know, the Spurs were like a college culture. You with your success, and I, I and I just can't, I can't state it enough. Like you played in the league for 14 years. 14. You only were you were never on a team with a losing record. Nope. And you only missed the postseason one time when, oh. with when you played with it Channing. Wasn't which, which again, like I was still trying don't, to don't get me myself. wrong. Like <laughs> if shit's gonna go bad, it's gonna go bad with Channing around. So no, like we I are still that. 500 though. We're yeah, well, a rebuilding ooh, team. Well, okay. Anyways, yeah. in the West, how young like, Brandon? When young you Lamarcus. when you, so James. point being of that is you were around great cultures. Like, it's hard in the NBA to win. It's hard to be consistently good. And it's not like you were on a bunch of teams. You were in Indiana, and I remember those teams. We played against you guys in the postseason, yep. in the Miami teams. Yep. Then all of a sudden you go to Portland. So you, you, you were on a lot of success. 
How did you try and take all the pieces from those different cultures and start implementing them here in Phoenix? I mean, well, all those teams had a common thread. Every guy on that team loved to compete mm -hmm. and at everything basketball related. Mm -hmm. And so when you stepped on the floor and you're playing one-on-one, -on -one, every guy wants to win. Yeah. If you're playing five-on-five -five and you're keeping score, who's getting defensive stops, yeah. every team wants to win. You don't find very many guys on our team. You won't find a guy on our team that's like, Oh, yeah, you can have that one. You can, you can have that one. I'll get the next one. Yeah. Um, and that's that culture of work and com com competition. And mm -hmm. so if you think about, like, college environments, usually when you're in college, all guys do is play basketball and compete at everything. Mm -hmm. Horse, one-on-one, -on -one, sprint drills, yeah. suicide drills. And so we wanted to make sure that we had the types of guys that would embrace work and competition. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where they shine. And so when we, you look at us on the floor – some nights we're going to be outmanned physically. Some nights we're going to have more talent than us. But our guys will always step on and say, hey, they won't outcompete us. They won't outwork us. And that's where they get their confidence. So one, one, one more. With, when we're talking about Chris Paul having the dinner at the house, right, that sounded like 100 dinners we had yeah. during our chant. We, well, it was dinners, some drinks, and, like, it was – but it was – you know, we would go over to Bron's house or we would go over to K Love's house and we would just do a dinner and just be around each other. And even when we were annoyed with each other, we yeah. couldn't stand each other or, like, people were beefing, not in, like, a negative way, like in a brother way. Like, we understood the importance of being around each other. The Chris Paul edition, like, having that leader there – what was that? What did what did that mean? And like, do you see similar? Because I've never played with Chris Paul, so like, but you know, he's obviously a Hall of Famer. He's a legend. But like, are there similarities between him and Braun and how they try and bring people together to push towards a goal? Oh yeah, they care about their teammates. Yeah. Right. And and that's the most important thing for them is is not just winning, but helping their teammates win. Right. Mm -hmm. And and there aren't any limits to how far they'll go to help their team win. So if that means having dinners, great. That means bringing guys in and listening to them. If that means spending extra time away, like going to a guy and meeting a guy where he is to bring him up to where you want him to go, mm -hmm. that's what those guys do because that's their nature. Their nature as leaders is to, to lead a team to victory. And so having Chris, a guy that if you ask anyone that's ever played with Chris, they're like, he's the most competitive guy. All he wants to do is win, but he doesn't want to win for himself. Yeah. He wants to win for the team, and, and it's genuine. So it's not – tough to take criticism from him because you know where it's coming from it's not hey you're holding me back from winning he's like no this is holding you back from winning so listen to me so that's that's why he's been so instrumental for us I, th I think one thing that I've always noticed about you is your assessment of talent is pretty dang spot on right and I've uh, watched as you you know worked your way pretty quickly up to you know, you obviously you got executive of the year or whatever but like for me, just, just whatever. <laughs> Don't you just, this is why Channing you know, Frye is the right. most awesome. It's like you know, yeah, yeah. Right. Look, you got the MVP or whatever, but you're a good player. You're, 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 good, you're, right. you're right. But for me, right? And we we, ch we talk about everything whenever we see each other. You know, you always have friends or teammates who, like, when you see them, you feel like you've never. I've seen you every single day. Right. It's just one of those things. And so, talked about college. What is one thing you look for in college players or guys you want to draft or guys you want here, right? What is, like, two traits or three traits? Again, you said competitiveness. Yeah. You said they want to compete. What are some other things? So people listen. It's like, hey, you don't have to be the best shooter. Right. You don't have I to mean, be the best rebounder. But you got to compete. you got to try. Those, so those are behaviors, right? right? Competition, the working part. Like, those are just your actions. It's your, your behavioral pattern. Like, you're going to come every day and you're going to give what you have. I look for capacity. Like, I'm, you know, I, I think what happens in, in, in our game too much is people talk about potential. Yeah. A guy potentially can do something. Yeah. He can't shoot now, but if he works at it in two years, maybe he'll be able to play. Well, I understand as a player at this level, when you're playing with the, against the best in the world, you have to have something you can hang your hat on every night that gives you confidence that if I do what I'm supposed to and I continue to work on these other things, I can survive. And so for me, I look at a college guy who has experience, he's been there three or four years, has demonstrated over three or four years, he can rebound at a, at a high level. He can pass at a high level. He can shoot at a high level. I'm confident when he comes in, he'll say, okay, I may not be bigger than him, I may not be faster, it may take me time, it may take time for the game to slow down, but my identity is I know I can score. 
and I've been scoring for three or four years, and even when things are bad, I can lean on that. So I'm looking for guys that, that have the capacity to do the things that translate here. If you can defend, there are m multiple ways to defend, be a team defender or whatever, but that's what it's about. This episode of Road Trippin' is brought to you by Bourbon Time. Even if you don't have a traditional nine to five schedule, there is no denying that this past year has changed the way that work and rest intersect. Without a designated office to come home from, we're missing that natural break in our days. Our friends at Jim Beam recognize this phenomenon and they wanna help us out. Beat the burnout and start blocking off the hour of 6 to 7 p.m. as your me time, where you can do what you love for you and only you. And what better way to spend my me time than with my feet up enjoying a nice smooth glass of Jim Beam. So let's make the idea of bourbon time a reality. Join me in reclaiming 6 to 7 p.m. as the happiest hour so you can do whatever it is that makes you happy. And if that involves a glass of bourbon, remember to drink Jim Beam responsibly. Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume, copyright 2021, James B. Beam Distilling Company, Claremont, Kentucky. The NFL is back and FanDuel Sportsbook is celebrating with 40 to 1 odds on any week one game. Who doesn't want to win $200 on a $5 bet? This is no Hail Mary. It's that simple. New customers get 40 to 1 odds when you place your first wager on any team to win. FanDuel is sports betting made simple. The app is so easy to use. Plus, when you win, you'll get paid in as little as 24 hours. To get you started, here's who I'm taking for my Week one, 40 to one bet. Rams over the Bears. Obviously, week one, Sunday night football. You've got the first night, first game in SoFi Stadium, Matt Stafford. I know there's a lot of conversation about the quarterback situation with the Bears. I'm taking the hometown Rams. Hey, offers like this, they're just one of the many reasons I love betting the NFL on FanDuel. Number one rated sportsbook app in America. Easy to use, safe and secure, fast payouts. See for yourself why FanDuel is America's number one sports book. They're always hooking you up with exclusive odds boosts, great promotions, and so much more. Just sign up with promo code ROADTRIPPIN and you could win $200 on a $5 bet. That's promo code ROADTRIPPIN exclusively on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Disclaimer, 21 years and older and present in Arizona, Colorado, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, or Virginia, or West Virginia, new users only. $10 first deposit required, must wager in designated offer market, max bonus $200. Bonus for Tennessee users fulfilled in site credit within 72 hours. Tennessee site credit expires in 14 days after receipt. See full terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Restrictions apply. See full terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com backslash RG. Colorado, Iowa, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Illinois, or Virginia. 1-800-9-WITH-IT, Indiana. 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help in Michigan. Tennessee Redline, 1-800-889-9789 in Tennessee. Visit www.1800gambler.net in West Virginia or call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text NEXT STEP in all caps to 53342 in Arizona. We're so excited to be here with FanDuel uh, at the Footprint Center launching the sports book. I'm here with Cam Johnson, James Jones, and of course Channing Fry. So Channing just kind of glossed over the executive of the year thing. <laughs> but like he's like, oh, you look, like, I know you won the executive of the year and thing. That was like, what, two years ago? That was, yeah. Whatever, it's 15 minutes ago. My point is this as you're not there, Cam, so you're going to have to hold on here. Yeah. As former players, and I can know this, and Channing knows this, we know basketball is what we did, who we were, how, how, where does this rank, that award? I know you didn't win the championship this year, but like as far as like looking for that validation and respect in your new craft, what did that like award mean? I mean, it meant a lot for, for, for me um, personally, just because it's something that you don't, I didn't set out to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and more importantly, I, I feel grateful for my teammates yeah. and I call my coaches my players everyone that works for us for their efforts and their abilities because without your team being good mm -hmm. without winning games it doesn't happen yeah. and so they won that award for me yeah and like it just gives me you know it just energizes me to go out and do as much as I can to help them right. uh, because it's a team effort but it's 
definitely something. Did that, you get something nice for Cam? Because Rod Thorne, when he drafted me, he won Executive of the Year, right? And then he got us a gift. Did Cam, did he get you anything? No, uh, I got him a trip to the finals. A trip yeah. to the finals. Oh, here yeah. we go. Yeah, yeah see, contract so, must be coming God. up. Oh, see, that my contract God. must be coming up. Okay, did anybody ever get Executive of the Year while you no. were playing on the team? C- no. No. <laughs> CP is a, I'd say CP is a gift. Yeah. CP, CP. Oh, CP yeah. was definitely a gift to you guys. Hey, look, and this is where I was so fortunate. My rookie year, I get drafted, and I had Jason Kidd, yep. who is a similar type floor leader, like yep. competitor, like playmaker. So, like, it makes the game so they much easier. Cut the game. It short makes they the game short, easy. The, no, the game's like, a shortcut. Yeah. It's just like this Not segment. Really you do this, that. and we're going to be fine. Did. I'm going to do everything else. You did have that. What? At St. Mary's. You had, <laughs> you had, you had Stephon Marbury. And we had a lot of other things. We had a lot of turmoil. That's what we, we had a lot of turmoil, Richard. I was over at hanging out at Richard's house more often complaining about my team. Like, damn, this can't be real life. And then Malik Rose would be like, Jenny, this is not how the NBA is. For well, Malik came from, he came from San Antonio, San Antonio which was, was a like, very different culture place. Um, oh, boy. Yeah. yeah. When you're on a bad team, sometimes it just – it does make you, you feel like, dang, man, I don't know if I love that. <laughs> so, so getting this whooping by 50 ain't it. So I want to talk uh, about some of your it's as, as you say. Aiton, our Arizona boy, Wildcat, number one pick, he made some tremendous growth this year. And I'm not going to lie. I'm going to sit up here and say that I have complained about DeAndre before. When I saw him shooting threes, and when I saw him shooting jumper, it doesn't mean he's not skilled or doesn't have that ability, but I'm like, this dude's built like David Robinson. Like, like, yes, that should be in a di- that should be a cherry on top of what he can do. But like when you guys brought in Chris Paul and you could see kind of like how his game started to really mold into a dominant, dominant big man, not just a rolling, you know, roll roll to the rim, but post moves, some post work. Like, was there like an individual thing that you had a conversation with him? Because his game started to evolve in a, in a much quicker once in, in the, probably the last 18 months. I just told him to try to – I tried to simplify it for him and tell him to focus on the things in the areas where he could dominate, Yeah. right? Like, you, if you think about where he can excel the most – those are the areas we can help our team. Uh, our team is built on the perimeter, and the entire interior is, is his. So if you, you, you want to score down there, you're not fighting and competing with anyone else. Yeah. We'll concede that There's to no you. one else that posts You just out. have to go and, uh, and, uh, and attack that. And so it's like don't stand on the perimeter shooting threes. Yeah. Our, our, our guards will do that, and you won't find them down there trying to post up and take your jump hooks. Yeah. So he, he embraced that, and I think with Chris – and, and our, our, our teammate, just the chemistry amongst our team, it allowed him to find his own. Because you know with big guys, all yeah. the big guys it's want wor- to. It's nothing to worse than big men that just want to oh, stand outside and shoot. Straight, straight ratchet. Mo- <laughs> they just straight ratchet. <laughs> they just want to be on the perimeter. When you're Cam's looking at you listen, like now, like, are you a good listen, shooter? Listen, the no, reason, the reason I am the way I am is because of this guy. He goes, Channing, if you're going to be a specialist, be a specialist. There is a there is room for you in this league for a long time time and I said really he goes man when I was in Phoenix we did this Channing you have an opportunity where did I go next year I came to Phoenix and absolutely barbecued the whole league (laughs) and barbecued on the rest and we won a chip on it because if you can't double team the best player then that guy then it's not on me right then we're playing four and four that is a skill that is a thing that teams will pay a lot of money for playing four and four with a guy like Devin Booker and DeAndre Aiden Rowland will make you Lots of millions yeah. of dollars. So don't be fooled by all this. I'm not posting up. I'm playing with Kevin Love and Braun and Tristan. I don't need to go down there. Come on out here to Fry Island. Chen, I play with you in 2K. Oh, okay. Oh, Do you play with Richard? Did you, you ever win? Richard. Did you ever no, win? you don't play with Richard. Right. Nobody yeah, plays. Come on, man. My corner three. To have a big in 2K that can shoot, it sometimes it's just. Oh. It's just a, yeah. Yeah. Ah, feels good. <laughs> But uh, oh, now you got to drink that water. But DA found his own. He found his own. He did. did. And, and, oh, that was, that and was I was so happy. Year. I was so happy because it was like I saw him dominate Arizona, mainly on the interior. But he's skilled. But it's yeah. like like David Robinson, when you make that comparison, it's like the physicality, the size, the ability to run. It's not like a like David Robinson wasn't Shaq. He was a skilled big man. You know, we're older, yeah. so it's the Rick Smiths, yep. it's the Patrick Ooh, Ewings. Those are the guys. It's like, you know, no one's trying to take away your growth of your skill, but, like, you can see that there was a trend of, like, more not to your point. The area where you could help the team most or right. where they needed the most help wasn't getting the most attention. Correct. Right? And that was the part for me where I'm like, 
dude, you could be one of the best big men of this era for the next 15 years. Because he's only, what, what, he's like 16 right now? 23. Yeah. I'm not great with guessing yeah. ages. Like, <laughs> it's not great. It's close. There's some, something, around, something along those but, lines. But go ahead. I'll say as a big man, the most dangerous – and the most, and the best part that feels great is when your mind is quiet. When you go out to a game, you don't have to do anything that is, like you said, a, I'm not trying to do a little bit of you, a little bit. Of, when I saw him catch the ball, look, take a dribble, and finish over a two guard that was on the bottom weak side, I was like, he gets it. He's not in a rush. He's not trying to like dunk on three people. You have a mic in your mouth. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> He's not trying He's, to do this. I felt like his mind was quiet in it a was, sense where. It was. He was like, I just got to run here, do this. I catch. I look in the corner. Nobody's there. Then I look. Oh, you a little you a little shrimp? Get this baby out the street. Finish. And when he started doing that, teams are like, oh, dang. We oh. can't rush him. Yeah. Right? And then he was catching the, behind the lobs. And he was just doing things that were so simple that he goes, he started yeah. to get his confidence from it. And then his energy started changing defensively yep. where he was stopping the, stopping the ball and then getting back to his man on the lob, right, which is one of the hardest things to do in the NBA as a big man, especially when you have guys rolling behind you. Especially when like, you're as athletically gifted as yourself. <laughs> Shit, that ain't me. Listen, I'm a positional defender. I'm in the right position. Me playing defense, that's 50-50. Right? That's 50 50. I'm there. Coach, I'm there. I just can't move. Right? got to get the knees <laughs> I gotta, I gotta get, get the get knees. The, I gotta get. I gotta get the the flex all on the yeah, knees. Yeah, that's what I'm in there for. You can take this too. I'm gonna. I'm be up one by the time we get back down. <laughs> Cam, Cam, I want. I, okay. I'm sorry, Cam. This, a bad oh, this the right locker room was the, like this. Yeah. this, this oh, they were but louder with louder. Shump and Kyrie. Jordan. Congratulations on Shump on Dancing with the Stars. Does that mean he's done playing basketball? It. Yeah, he's doing Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> Shump doggy. You didn't know that? It was on the text chain. I did not know that. It was no. on the text chain. I did not know that. Okay. Congrats. Congrats, Congrats. Congrats man. That's kind of, like, win. First of all, he's going to win it. He'll That's win. why I literally He'll said win. on the text chain. I'm like, watch. Wow, Shump going to win. Uh, Cam, I want to ask you, okay, everybody learns a lot, this and that. What did you l- learn the most? And don't, don't take this the wrong way which is always a bad way to start a question. Yeah. What, what did you learn the most from your loss in the finals? No, no, no. I mean this respectfully yeah, yeah. because, no, like, no disrespect. You can, no, You're you, trash. No, <laughs> but, like, hear me out. Hear, hear me out. Let me give you an example, Cam. Let me give you an example. When we lost to the San Antonio Spurs my second year, Steve Kerr crushed us. Speedy Claxton crushed us. Like, Steve Kerr came in the game, hit two threes. We could no longer double-team Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan goes for 20 19, it's like 20, 20, 10, and 9. Ooh. You almost had a quadruple double in game six of the finals. So going into the 2016 final, what I remember is thinking to myself, 8 through 12 are going to have an impact in this series. Because I saw the last time I was in the finals, 8 through 12 had a big impact. So I go in and Champ, Champ will attest to this. I went in, got some garbage time. They gave me five minutes because we were getting blown out. Oh. We were getting blown Ooh. out. So they gave me five minutes at the end of the game because they said, and I just went super hard. Richard was going. Uh, dumb. I was going super hard, like it was game <laughs> like playing like, fast forward. I was, playing, playing I was going forward. super hard because I remember like, I'm like, yo, like <laughs> this is not over. So then game two, get blown out again. So I get like seven minutes, and I'm going hard. He going goes super hard. Garbage time etiquette. He broke all of broke all the rules. I'm trying <laughs> to dunk on people. Yes. I'm doing everything. He was getting to the free throw line. Like, man, come on, we down 30. And so now, to the fast fights. forward to game three, Kevin Love gets a concussion. Yeah. And and uh, um, uh, what's our coach's name? Tyron Lue. Yeah, that was his name. T. Lou goes, man, well, Richards played. Who should we start instead of Kevin? It's like, well, Richards played well in the minutes that he had. And then that ultimately gave us a little bit of momentum. We went small and, and that worked. So I learned a lot in my loss to the Spurs because six through, I mean, I want to say eight through 12 had an impact. So I came in thinking like, okay, I'm one of the eight through 12. Don't take shit for granted. Come in, lock in. You get five minutes, go hard. You get two minutes, go hard because it's going to have an impact. So I say all that. Did you learn something from your loss that you feel like moving forward could actually give you something, you know, to grow on? Um, Yeah, I did. Um, I think a big part of, that was just figuring out how to stop teams and figuring out how to stop something different. Mm-hmm. The, the Bucks presented us with different challenges than, than we had seen most of the playoffs, um, and, and a lot of it was their size. Yeah. And you learn that, you know, guys like Giannis are, are pretty good. <laughs> and when they really get going and hit every free throw, too, it's a wrap. then it, it makes it a lot harder. Mm-hmm. 
and it makes it a lot harder to kind of force them to do what you want them to do. And we still have arguments about what we could have done better, what worked, what didn't work. Those will haunt was, you for the rest of your life. We'll, They'll never change. We'll in, a po- in a positive we'll, way. We'll yeah. start talking, and the yeah. next thing you know, tempers are flaring because I'm like, we, <laughs> like, we should have done this. And I'm like, well, if we would have done this. Yeah. And I think it's just that cumulative experience, that yeah. cumulative experience, the being so close. And, and when I look at it, I see – Game four, mm-hmm. where we're up nine Ooh. with 11 minutes left. I was, we, I was, you know, I heard, that hurt me for you guys. Right in the beginning of the fourth quarter, we're up six with a couple minutes left, and you just see them chipping away. So not that you, we didn't know it, but just the importance of possessions. Just yeah. the importance of possessions, how you're right there so much, yeah. but it turned into four straight losses. Yeah. Um, and, then, and buckling down on it. But it's the experience. Yeah. It's the experience of it. And um, – and just taking away all those lessons from, and remembering that feeling, that feeling that we had walking off the court in Game Six, because you don't you don't realize the feeling. You don't. It doesn't set in yeah. until you the buzzer rings starts. Like, and you're like, oh, this, this is over. Left, you're like, you're oh, down seven, but you're like, something what can could happen. Do? Something yeah, can happen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So when that confetti starts coming down, and and you're walking off the court, and they start celebrating, it's immediate, right? It's immediate, it and sucks. it's just like because you're so locked in. When you finally take those blinders off, you're like... You see it. Sorry. You see it. You see it. And then even for me, I scream, we are up four. And I'm so locked in, like, somebody got to contest. And then somebody <laughs> goes, I'm saying we're up four. I said, no, no dude, no, get contest. the rebound. You don't want to contest. That's the actual complete <laughs> dude, opposite. Thinking, but I'm so locked in, like, to every single... <laughs> yeah. I said, dude, James was there next yeah. to me. And I asked Spiro. I was like, hey, I got to go to the back. I'm about to die. <laughs> That's my car. Every possession. But, like... And then in 17, that was a different beast, right? Because right. we were me, like, me, all right, t- who are we going to double team? Well, the greatest shooter of all time, me, just me, to leave the greatest scorer t- of all time. T- I saw T. Lou a couple days ago, and he was like, we were kind of talking, and he was just like, he was, we were some other people. He was like, man, yeah, Richard was trying to retire. I'm like, yeah, I want to retire. Then I was like, you know what? We got the best team in the league. Why yeah. am I going to retire? Right. I'm like, this Warriors team is great. They won, you know, 73 games. But I feel like if we play this team again, we can beat them. But they didn't show up with the same <laughs> shit. <laughs> they showed up. They the showed up. Team. They showed up with one of the baddest dudes that oh. I've ever seen in my life, and it was like there was no beating yeah. that team. Yeah. There's no beating. There that was team. no beating that There's team. There's no defensive. Yeah. No. No. You, were like, you, okay. you have to get lucky, and you have to be healthier. Like, yes. At, at that point, that's the only shot. But yes. That's you know that's the finals. And oh. to, to Cam's point, when you go through that pain, what you realize is just one possession makes the difference. You make one shot. Instead of losing the game by one, you win by one. It's yeah. you you make one shot or you don't turn the ball over. Instead of an eight nothing run, it becomes a six nothing run, and you're able to make a shot and you're able to change the dynamic of the game. So it comes down to possessions. Like one possession can be the difference between win and a title. As a shooter, I remember Alvin Gentry and, and come from Portland. I was still kind of discovering who I was as a player, and so I made a game winning shot in Indiana the night before. And then the next night we had a back-to-back against New Jersey, and I was like one for 16 or something like that. Just, Jeez. just died. Just like absolute ill. I wasn't a back-to-back guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> so coach goes, Channing, he looked at me, and he goes, I'm going to you. And I said, ah, right? <laughs> and he goes, Channing, if we are going to play in the street and you have one chance to make one shot, one possession, you think you can make it? I said, any day of the week. So he goes, forget about the 17 you missed. You just got one. And I ended up making it. And that changed my whole attitude. I was like, damn. Like, when it really counts, you know, especially as a shooter, you can miss all those. But if you have an opportunity to make that one that's important, it is something that you got to have put into work to, like, kind of forget all that mess, forget all that garbage, and say, hey, we're going to retry this, and I'm betting on myself for that one possession. So I I, I, I would never. like, th- But Channing – one big thing that people, first of all, like, your lips are so dry. Are you okay? <laughs> you want some water? I did drink water. You they want are some chaps. more? Yes. I'm not used to this humidity out here. Humidity? <laughs> <laughs> it's Arizona. monsoon season. Yeah. It's monsoon season. Yo, okay. So, a Habib so as, as. Let's get dry when it goes. So he said, I'm not used to the humidity in Arizona. Like, do y'all hear this shit? <laughs> okay. So, as two Phoenicians, right, two kids that grew up here. Like, the Phoenix Suns are everything. There's been a bit of a drought, you know, no pun intended. But what was it like feeling the energy in the city rise? 
right? Like this is a, like this is I, Arizona's a different place, but I would consider when when if they could pick any team to be great, they would pick the Phoenix Suns over over the Ooh. over the Cardinals, over the Diamondbacks, over the Coyotes. They would pick the Phoenix Suns. What was the energy like from like your first year to all of a sudden y'all win the first round, second round? Could you go to restaurants anymore? Could you go anywhere? Was it just chaos? Uh, yeah, they came out in full force. Yeah, that's the only way to put it. And my first year here, so I was coming from Chapel Hill. Yeah, so that's great. And chaos. Chapel Hill, it's chaos. Yeah, you know, you're, it's it's decent. Uh, but when I got here, I was so under the radar, man. I could go places. Places, yeah. You're tall. You play basketball. I play sometimes. Oh, you look like you look like you should play more. I'm, yeah, I probably. Should. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Something yeah. like that. But now, since 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 this season, since this finals run, it's Nowhere. been wild. Yeah. But you appreciate it because yes. these are the people that were packing the stands. These are the people that were packing the stands when we were in Milwaukee playing. Yeah. And, and especially after not having fans for a year. Yeah. For a whole calendar year, mm. and then them coming back in. That place was. Rocking. I couldn't buy anything. I literally tried to buy some hats and jerseys for my kids. They were like, "Oh, we're sold out." And Nike, and Nike was like, "We're not. We we're, we're not. We can't supply them again until the following season." Right. So like everything in every place around here was sold out. What was the? What? Give me one weird instance that happened. You're like, "Okay, yeah, this is different." In terms of off the court? No, yeah, just like. Going into a place and they it was like right dinner. after the finals. It was I was going to Costco because I needed to pick up some things. <laughs> okay, from house. okay, pick up a slice and of I just, pizza. I just some wanted free to take samples. a quick. They don't do samples now during COVID. <laughs> oh, I forgot. My bad. <laughs> but yeah, yeah I love the Costco samples. So I was just trying to pick <laughs> up some <laughs> things. Like I needed a fan for the garage. Yeah. I needed this, that, and the other. Maybe pick up some food. I left with maybe three things. You always go to Costco. You're gonna spend like three hundred dollars minimum. Yeah. I spent like fifty bucks because you got to get I out. Had to get out. Yeah. I spent like forty-five minutes in there. I had like three things in my cart, and I'm like, you know what? Maybe, I'll, <laughs> maybe, just, maybe Amazon. I'll just come at it. Yeah, maybe I'll just order it or yeah, come maybe, at a time when nobody's I'd, here. Yeah. And it, and you know, I if somebody's excited to see you, and and yeah. you know, there's somebody that it, it might make their day, and if you can spend a minute to make their day, I'll do it. But then it was just like kind of the whole store kind of <laughs> so like, oh, oh, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. He's up in here. Like, yeah. You a nice dude. Car. You a nice so dude, Cam. It, it, that was the that was the turning point because I hadn't been out and around during the finals. I was, you know, you go from the gym, home, sleep, recover, get back to the gym and try to play another game, try to win the finals. You should have been Chan's teammate because if you were, you wouldn't have those problems. Well, why you say that? The teams he played on. But it was, I appreciate it. I appreciate yeah, it. James always got the done. Jim always got the jokes. Uh, okay, so let let let's let's I did play on some crappy. Teams. You did play on some <laughs> shitty teams. Like, wow, like die. Some bad ones. Had to get up out of there. You didn't win without me. So that's that that's fine. Bad. But I went to a lot of playoffs. Pieces. I went to the playoffs like twelve times in my seventeen <laughs> years. Like we got yeah. the same ring. That's yeah, that's too. fine. That's fine. Yeah. So a lot of yeah. rebuilding. Yeah. We won forty eight <laughs> games. They're like, we need to rebuild. <laughs> Who can we get? Chad. <laughs> I want to close up and talk about next year. Like, not putting expectations on it. I want to talk about, like, your goals individually. And then you, well, I want you to talk about you. Then I want you to talk about the team. Yeah. And then Channing. I'm just here with chap lips, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Cam. So, like, that's one of the fun things about the postseason is that when you have this type of like success and it doesn't mean that you're averaging 25 through the postseason but you understand you understand now that you have another gear yep. that like yep. when I need to sit down in a stance when I need to make that rotation like I know I'm capable what is something that you want to add to improve to your individual game for your own growth and then also like ways that you can contribute to the team and add that uh, just playing more with the ball in my hands mm -hmm. um, I have been very very off ball mm -hmm. oriented and we got guys that like to have the ball in their hands so I just you know find shots, opportunities where I can. Mm -hmm. But being able to play more with the ball in my hands has been, a, has been a big focus. I think I've made shots from year one to year two, and I think I'll continue to make them going forward. Mm -hmm. but just adding it, just adding everything. You know, like, like Champ said, you do your things, you do them well, you know your role. Um, but for me, I, I, I take and I try to add in. Yeah. I try to just, like, like you said, start with what I have. Yeah. Start with what I know I can do, what I can hang my hat on mm -hmm. at the beginning and end of the day, and then sprinkle the other things in as mm -hmm. I get, you know, comfortable figuring out the team, the system. So I think these first two years have just 
have just been great in terms of what I've been able to pick up, what I've been able to see that, okay, I need to be better at this. Okay, these opportunities present themselves. Okay, I can take more advantage of these opportunities. So just adding that in uh, and then continuing to, to, to compete on the defensive end. Because mm -hmm. I, I, in high school, college, like I had the reputation of not defending anything. My coach, Jamie Dixon, pulled out a chair my freshman year in practice. It randomly at the beginning of practice and just started yelling at me, told me telling me I couldn't guard the chair. I'm like, Coach, we need to start practice here. I didn't have a chance to guard anybody. <laughs> by the way, by the way, I've known Jamie Dixon yeah. since I was like 15 yeah, years NAU, old. So yeah, NAU, that's here. my yeah. guy. Yeah. I just yeah. saw him a couple weeks ago yeah. in Vegas. Oh, yeah, he was yeah, the yeah, coach yeah, yeah. there. Remember yeah. Goose? But yeah, and it was him and Ben Howland. Him and Ben Howland. Crazy. Were at the I used to go to yeah. the, camp. the team camp. Yeah. yeah, that was a big like everybody yeah, yeah. Would go out to flags after the team camp. It was a good time. Oh yeah. So since those days, it's always been like, all right, I'm gonna prove that I can defend people. Yeah. And, yeah. and that, I think, has probably been my biggest improvement since, I, since college. Mm -hmm. And I think there's still a long way to go in terms of uh, fully f realizing that, flushing that out, and, and, and getting to it there. Okay. Sweet. Sweet. Champ, this year your team. Now, you understand that last year was a, a different year. I think everybody understands that. It's, it's part of the, the ebbs and flow of the NBA. You know, what do you want to see from this team? Where like you, you guys ha are going to be one of the best teams in the Western Conference. You're, you re-sign Chris Paul. You guys are bringing back all your guys. Like championship is still the goal, right? But what 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 do you want to see as far as growth and improvement? Because it's hard to win a championship. It's hard to get to the finals every year. But you can still be gr getting better every single year. Right. I've, so for me, it's like we said before last year, which was having championship moments every game. Right. Mm -hmm. Every game should be a championship experience. You should learn something that can you can add to your toolbox that will help you when you get in a championship moment. But if you look at teams, like the way I think about it is, if we're going to continue to have this growth, your, your natural response is to say, okay, what do I add, right? Before you say, okay, where do I double down and where can I become more efficient mm -hmm. uh, with my base? Mm -hmm. You know, so for us, we're a team that shares the ball. Can we be better? sharing the ball you know we're a great shooting team can we improve our shot quality those are the things that we do well mm -hmm. let's continue to do those well but even more efficiently before we add things because the first thing you assume is like hey last year we were a good offensive team right so we're going to be good we're going to if we just show up we'll be yeah. just as good offensively as we were last year this year and if i can add to my game if we can add this dynamic maybe we can beat a team like milwaukee well, that's not my – like, every year is different, and the only way you get to that point is being true to who you are, more efficient with what with you do, while throughout the course of the year, those championship moments, you stack it. So, like, that's my focus for our team. Defensively, we're a defense-first team. Let's not forget that. And then offensively, let's share the game a little bit more so that when we get into those moments, what like Cam said, it's just not Devin or Chris. Yeah. It's, okay, they can go Devin or Chris, but – DeAndre can score in the post, and Cam can get off the bounce, and Mikel can create on his own. And you look at guys come off our bench like Cam Payne, we want to be dynamic where they don't know where we're going to hit them because we aren't a team that Yeah, your has versatility is, is – We don't have a yeah, Giannis, yeah. right? And, and we're not going to be that type of team. We're not going to try to play that type of way because we're a team, team, we're a team first, like a, a collective. That was a good answer, wasn't that was it? That was a really, really good, good answer. answer. That's, like, yeah, yeah. that's why he won executive of the year. Yeah. They're a smart guy. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> or whatever. Whatever, you know, a little executive uh, or nothing. All right, for yeah. Richard Jefferson, Channing Fry, and, you know, Allie Clifton, I, that was a terrible exit. I'm not good at this yet. Again, how do, how do I exit? How do I close? You say, thank oh, you, guys. How does Allie normally close? Don't you just, isn't this road trip? Yeah, this another road episode of Road Trip. Yeah, thanks. Is that what we're doing? We just did it. Bow. Bow. That's, that was our close. Yeah. Allie, we miss you. Like, you're normally here sitting in this chair, so uh, it takes some pressure off us. But, guys, thank you. No, we thanks appreciate for you so much. Time. Appreciate thank you. Good luck this year. Good so to see you guys. Yeah. We'll Great to see you guys. Good, good luck, man. Hey, hey, you guys had a hell of a year, man. You too. Yeah. <laughs>